Welcome to 252 Theater's online service, a ministry of New Spring Church in Wichita, Kansas. Fun lives here, so get ready to have a great time and learn about a great big idea. That's right. A big idea is something God wants to do inside you to change the world around you. The biggest ideas are the big three. We hope after joining us online, you'll know that you can treat others the way you want to be treated, make the wise choice, and trust God no matter what. You'll get to experience fun games, skits, worship, and of course, a powerful story straight out of God's Word. More than a video, this is your chance to be a part of something amazing. So get your popcorn, crank up the volume, and get ready for incredible fun. It all starts in three, two, one. Happy birthday. H-A-P-Y, what kind of spelling is that? Oh, hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about gratitude while we take a look at a super helpful habit. Ha, shout out to whoever invented the eraser. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about gratitude. Which is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Who's the car for? My big sister. She's basically the best sister in the world. You got any scientific evidence for that? Well, she helped me learn to ride a bike. Plus, she always checked my closet for monsters. I like to eat socks. And when I couldn't understand fractions, she made it all easy. This is one-sixth of a pizza. See? Best sister in the world. Okay, that's pretty convincing evidence. Are you doing anything for her birthday? Now, see, that's the problem. What's the problem? Well, she loves cinnamon rolls, so every year for her birthday breakfast, I get her these awesome, gooey cinnamon rolls. No problem there. But this year she went gluten-free, and I can't find any gluten-free cinnamon rolls anywhere. Well, why don't you make them? Because I'm not a pastry chef. I know how you can learn in five minutes. Five minutes? For reals? For reals. Then, let's make it! Okay, where do we start? One tablespoon of oil. What are we mixing it in? This. Cinnamon rolls in a mug? Gluten-free cinnamon roll microwavable mug cake, to be exact. Genius. There we go. Okay, what next? Two tablespoons of sugar. Add one egg yolk. Wait, how do you put in just the egg yolk? Like this, use your hand like a sieve. So as you can see, the egg yolk is splitting from the egg white. And then when you have nothing but the yolk, put it in the mug. Looks delicious. Now, you mix that up with a fork while I go wash my hands. Please. All right, great. Then we add two tablespoons of milk. that, and then a one-fourth cup of all-purpose gluten-free flour. Zeke, would you be so kind? Of course. You can also just use regular flour if you don't need it to be gluten-free. Then a one-eighth teaspoon baking powder, and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, mix it all up, uh, uh, gently. Wow, that's it? Well, we still gotta make some ooey gooey frosting, but right now, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Exodus and the book of 1 Corinthians. In the beginning, God created an amazing world, but people forgot God and turned away. The world was broken. God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the entire world through them. But God's people were enslaved in the land of Egypt for hundreds of years. The people cried out to God, and God saved them. 
but it's so easy to forget the amazing things God has done. So God told the people to hold a celebration. Each year they would eat a special meal to help them remember how God saved them. And though the Israelites did forget again and again, they still came back to that special meal. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. More than a thousand years after God led the people out of Egypt, Jewish people were still celebrating that special meal, the Passover. In fact, the night before Jesus gave up his life, he ate the Passover meal with his closest friends. Take this and eat it. Now, each time the Jewish people ate the Passover meal, it reminded them of how hard they had been forced to work in Egypt. Then God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague, a, a terrible warning, so Pharaoh would release the Israelites. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. Finally, God sent the tenth and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. After a heartbreaking night, the Israelites were saved. At last, Pharaoh ordered them to leave. Get out of here. Go. The Israelites packed up so quickly they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flat bread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. God told the people, always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. So as God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal that included lamb and flat bread with no yeast, like the bread they'd taken on their journey out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. Jesus himself grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the Passover with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He gave a brand new meaning to the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about that evening years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continued. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled so that we can live. And because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took that old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and turned it into a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or Communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued the Israelites from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice, but in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and how God has given us so much. We can always be thankful. The end. You know, it's super easy to think all these Bible stories are kind of random, but no way. 
It's all connected in such an incredible way. First, God made a plan to save one family, the Israelites. And from that family, God made a plan to save everyone who follows Jesus. Yeah, and God gave us a special way to remember. So what's our part in the story? Well, just like the Israelites, we can form habits of gratitude. One of the easiest ways to start is with mealtime. Yeah, when we thank God for our food. Now, your family might already have that habit. If not, you could start it. And you can always take a few moments and thank God for your food, even if you're eating on your own or at school. It doesn't even have to be out loud. You can connect habits of gratitude to other parts of the day, too. Like when you wake up, you can thank God for a brand new day even if you're not a morning person. <laughs> you could also make a habit of thanking your teacher anytime they help you at school. Or your parents when they help you at home. And at night, before you go to bed, take time to think back through your day. You can choose one specific thing to thank God for, like how good it felt to hit that ball super hard, or if your mom made your favorite dinner. Or just the amazing fact that your heart is beating and your lungs are taking in air, all because God makes it happen. So, we can make a habit of thanking God in the morning, at mealtime, at school, and at bedtime. Yeah, and the awesome thing about habits is that they actually blah, 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 rewire your brain. So if you start with one time and focus on being thankful every day, in about eh, three weeks, your brain will remind you automatically. I'm thankful God made our brain so awesome. <laughs> you got it. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Make a habit of being grateful. I am grateful in advance for this delectable mug cake. Can we zap it yet? Sure thing. Ooh, stop. Frosting, please. Yeah, right in there. That's perfect. Right there? Okay. It's glorious. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Mm, yum. This is so delicious. I'm definitely making the habit of this for my sister's birthday. Oh yeah, she's gonna love this. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's what the Jewish people did. They would remember what day it was based on those things. And so they would celebrate the Passover feast. And this was a big deal. If you were a Jewish person, you did not miss the Passover feast because this is how you celebrated how God delivered the Israelites from the Egyptians, showing that he is the one true God. I want you guys to realize how big of a deal it was that Jesus stepped in and said, from now on, you're going to do this to remember me. Yes, you'll remember what, what happened in Egypt. But when you have the cup and when you have the bread, you will remember me. And the fact that the blood spilled out of my body for you. And the fact that my body was broken for you. You know, as a Christian, there's two things that we do. Uh, the, the very first thing is after you become a Christian and you begin a relationship with Jesus... We've been directed by God to get baptized. Being baptized allows us to go public with our faith. And you know what? Today, I, I got the privilege. I got to sit with about 13 kids that filmed their testimony that are going to get baptized coming up on Friday night. Woo! That is awesome. We're going to celebrate that. But one of the other things that we're commanded to do is when you are a believer in Jesus is to take communion. You know why? Because we need reminders. We need to be reminded of what God did for us. It's so easy for us to just go about what we're doing and totally forget all the amazing things that God has done. But you know what? Every time that I have communion, you know what I go back to? In my mind, I can go back to the day when I was 13 years old and I was at a church camp in Salem Springs, Arkansas. And that was the day that I made Jesus my best friend forever. You know what I can remember? I can remember when Jesus died for me, I felt so relieved knowing that I don't have to pay for my sin, that Jesus did it for me too. And so at New Spring, if, if you're a follower of Jesus, we have we take communion on first Wednesday. And we'd love for you to come. There's one coming up in uh, December, and it's going to be a great celebration. Some other people are going to get baptized there. 
you can come take communion if you are a follower of Christ there. Isn't that awesome? You know, when we do this, it helps us get in the habit of being grateful. That's actually the bottom line for today. Would you guys say that with me? Everybody say, make a habit of being grateful. Hey, let me pray for you, and then we're going to go to small groups together. Dear Lord, thank you so much for the fact that you did sacrifice yourself for me and for these kids. That is the good news, that we were people separated by separated from God, but by your goodness, Jesus came and gave his life and paid for our sins. I pray that you'll help us to make a habit of being grateful. For those of us that are Christians, that we would take communion together and we would remember what you did for us on the cross. Help us, Lord, uh, just to, I, I pray that you would put this idea to work inside of us to change the world around us. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And Thanks for joining us today for 252 Theater Online. We hope you had a great time learning about the big idea. We'd love to get in touch with you. With your parents' help, you can visit our Facebook or Instagram page to message us any questions or prayer requests. If you would like a daily devotional that goes along with what you just heard, click the link in the description box below to download a God Time card that you can do at home. We have incredible fun like this every weekend, so make sure you click the subscribe button so you can see when our newest videos are posted. If you have younger or older brothers and sisters, we have amazing weekly content for their age group too. And of course, our doors are open every weekend for you to experience 252 Theater in person. Have a great week putting this big idea into practice, and we'll see you again next week.